let's sort of sum up where what we've where we've been so far, what we've seen so far. The one of the first things we talked about way back at the beginning of the semester, kind of the central idea of this course is the is the relationship between charge and field. Okay, and we said that charges create fields in space. And then if you have fields in space and you place a charge at a particular observation location, that field is going to affect or exert forces on, essentially, other charges. Okay, so charges create fields. Fields affect charges. That's the basic idea. Okay, We've seen ways in which this is done. We can say how charge makes a field. And we've seen a couple ways of doing this. Well, lots of ways of doing this, but the basically they flow from if you have just a charge, then it's going to create an electric field. And the electric field, we said, is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, Q over R squared times R hat. And then we use that lots of different ways to find electric fields due to different charge distributions, charge rods, charge rings, charge spheres, what have you. Okay, But it all came, kind of flowed from here. If the charge is also moving, say charge times a velocity, then the charge makes a magnetic field. And that is mu naught over 4 pi, QV cross R hat over R squared. Okay, And again, we can apply that to lots of moving charges in a current, uh, current rings, current loops, magnetic dipoles, what have you. But it all, again, kind of flows from that basic idea. And so charges make fields in these ways. Then we can think about how fields affect charges. We've talked about if you just have a static charge and you have an electric field, then it's going to exert an electric force on that charge, which is just equal to the charge times the field. Okay. The new idea that we're going to talk about now is that if you have a charge, how do magnetic fields affect it? How do magnetic fields exert forces on charges? And much like how you need to have a moving charge to produce a magnetic field, it turns out you need to have a charge moving in order to feel a magnetic force on it. So we can say the magnetic force. I'll just introduce the relationship and then we'll talk about it, is QV cross B, yet another cross product. Okay, It's the charge times the cross product of its velocity with the magnetic field. Okay, So what this is saying is if you have a magnetic field, let's say we have a magnetic field, Let's say B is yeah, let's say B is pointing down. Okay. This magnetic field could be due to due to what? What could, what could cause a magnetic field pointing down at this location? Okay, we could have a north pole up here, right? Or we could have we could have a south pole down here. Uh, anything else? Okay, we have a if we had a proton moving to the right. Uh, let's see. If we had a proton moving to the right, where uh, where do you want the proton? Oh, behind it. Yeah. If you if okay, that's a little hard to draw here, right? But if you had a proton moving that way, and I think of it, think okay. So do this in 3D. Here's the direction of the magnetic field pointing down, right? And if you have a proton moving that way, V cross R, which would be towards you guys, right, would give my thumb pointing down, right? So you, have, you can have a magnetic field produced by a proton moving to the right or a current, for instance, maybe a lot, you know, a, a, a wire where the, uh, we're looking at an observation location in front of the wire. So the, the idea is, is that you can have lots of different ways of producing a magnetic field pointing down at, this, at these locations, okay? You could have a, a coil, right? You could have a, a, a coil with a current that would be, let's see, if the current were flowing, conventional current were coming out here and flowing around in front and going in, 
that could produce a magnetic field pointing down. Okay, lots of different ways. Well, we've, all, we've produced this magnetic field somehow, and now I'm going to have another charge in this magnetic field. Okay, so let's say we have a, a charge moving to the right. Okay. This charge is not the charge that's producing this magnetic field. This is some other charge. Okay, so our magnet is, or our coil or what have you is producing this magnetic field, and then I shoot a positive charge through it, and the velocity is in that direction. Okay. Well, based on what we know about cross products, how would we find the direction of the magnetic force on that moving charge? Cross product says what? You have to point your fingers in the point the fingers of the right hand in the direction of the velocity, right? The first vector in the cross product. So everybody, fingers in the direction of the velocity. And I gotta curl my wrist around so that I can bend my fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. The field due to this coil or this magnet or whatever it is is pointing down at this point. So V cross B. It's going to feel a force pointing inward. So let's, let's draw that. We have the magnetic field pointing down at this location. And then V cross B gives me a force pointing in that direction. That's the direction of the magnetic force on that charge. Okay. And I also have to worry about the sign. If I multiply V cross B by a positive charge, then the vector, what happens to the direction? Stays the same, right? So the magnetic force is, in fact, in that direction. What if it were an electron moving in the same direction? What would be the direction of the force? It would be coming out, right? Because V cross B is in, but you multiply by a negative charge, you get a force outward, okay? So the force in that case would be out towards us. Get the idea? Basic idea? Let's try a couple questions. 